positive and abundance. What is negative and positive? If there is positive, the people are collapsed. If there is abundance, the people are just climbing in arrogance. So, these positive and negative urge cannot create sharing instincts or settlement instincts in the society. The third thing is policy corruption. If somebody starts an anti-corruption club, immediately after starting and running of the club, there comes the leadership problem, as well as sharing of the power problem, then gradually what are all the policies against which the corruption, anti-corruption bureau have been started to fight again, the same thing there is slowly they creep inside, they peep inside these academy and they will make it either equal or excellent warehouse of all the other evils against which it has been fighting before. It has been fighting before. So this type of policy corruption occurs, lack of networking between NGOs, public, especially women as well as students and as well as young people in the society, that should be a proper networking. So we have emanated in this platform now. We should evolve, we should expand, we should erect and effectualize with proper dealing of three things. One is what is the immediate work to be done, what is the long term work to be done, short term work to be done. Finally, in the concluding session, I want to say what is human rights. Everybody knows what, what is human rights. <laughs> to procure something is different from to address something or to explain or elucidate something. There is cultivation and there is harvest. Cultivation is a person's duty and hard work and harvest is a per person's reward for that. But the risk and reward, they are interchange. The persons who are beautiful and who, those who deserve to get something, they are totally downtrodden, they are totally abandoned in the society and persons unworthy or persons in power, survivor of the fittest policy that comes here, wherein by persons, those who do not participate in the judicial consciousness and execution, they share the benefits. This type of divide that exists in the society that has created a very great shame that we have to talk about human rights after becoming human, civilized science and technology has developed to such a level, we are thinking about invading other planets or colonization other planets, yet is in this era, if we are talking about just to being what human to a fellow human being, that we are totally an anti-deluvian era in spite of all the technical facilities which we are seeing now. Second thing, we have to ask a question. Who is deprived of human rights? Human beings? Who have exploited those humans? They are also human beings. Who are going to bring the reform? They are also human beings. Those who are deprived, those who are exploited, those who are going to bring the reform, everybody is human being, but there is a difference. Those who have exploited, they are known as subhuman beings. And those who have got the fear, or those who are divisionally isolated in the society, those who are having reluctance, ignorance, or any other that imbecilism inside in any other form, those people they are semi-human, they are human in form, but they are semi because they cannot convert their wishes into dynamic call or dynamic demand. So they are known as semi-human. And persons who are working for them, raising voices for those who cannot ask, those who are not allowed to ask, and those who are suppressed from being asking, those who are isolated, those who are deeply buried in the murky clutches of uh, ignorance, such people if you raise the voices, we are known as salient humans. So human rights is a process by which the semi-humans are liberated from the subhumans by salient humans like us. So this is a proper definition of what we call human rights. Human rights innumerable campaigns are there. Various other public uh, civil liberty unions have been started. Communism, it has also done innumerable things. Various other things like food, uh, water, shelter, education, job, freedom of expression, religion, everything. It is done for all works of people like tribals, HIV, AIDS people, disabled people, unorganized, downtrodden people, women, caste separated people. For everybody, the society has started. But the problem is, now human rights association is also a self-defense mechanism to protect themselves and to create mass attraction. It has been misused or it has been just organized as a fashion and show. Not reaching the real heart, spirit and pulse of the people who are in deserving need. So it should reach in such a manner. Innumerable regions are there. Certainly it should be a 10 day seminar with 30 sessions to discuss everything. Because these human rights, they basically they start with various other forms of life. Each and every form of life has its own right. It is so all exhaustive and all encompassing in nature. So it starts with the human rights. It starts with, I have already told about education, religion and other things. Even in each and every ideology, we have to segregate that. In nature, he has told already about nature, environment, then environmental degradation, like climate changing, and global warming, etc. And natural disasters, it is also a being. And also in a ruling system, administration, law and order, we are seeing detention, we are seeing pre preventive detention, custodial violence, custodial death is there, death sentence is there, extrajudicial killings are there, prisoners' rights are there, it is in one other area. 
disappearance, the displacement, the refugees issues, they are also there. Their working places, their uh, discrimination, sexual harassment, prostitution, those things are there. Political corruption is there, disruptivism is there, terrorism is there, anti-socialism is there. Then there is organ trade or organ transplant is there, numeral trafficking is there. And the innumerable things are there, anti-liquor, anti-drug, innumerable things are there in the society. There are two methodologies, one is tangible and second is subtle. Whatever we are doing in the form of enactment, reforms, advocacy and judicial, everything is in the tangible way. And to create inspiration, involvement, transmission, transformation is the subtle way. So the spiritual people or the social concern, people with the social concern, they have to make the preventive measures by subtle methodology and the tangible methodology, the curative methodology should be handled with people. Unless there is a bilateral, parallel travel by both the members of the society, the limited members of the society with mere authority, not having reached with the mass, especially towards the heart. You are giving only orders to the brain to learn or to know something. Unless you can reach and touch the heart and create transformation, it is not going to be very equally effective in the society. So that should be a bilateral things in the society. Even human rights, there are innumerable quotes are there, but the real effect is being questioned. There are innumerable debates. Somebody they discuss in a platform as the already existing constitutional rights are exhausting. And the Indian Penal Code consists of explanations for all penal sections and their respective punishments. Why to create various acts for confusing people, either it is for uh, projection or for some sort of uh, descriptive elucidation, what is the purpose? There was a debate. And second debate is about uh, the cognizance ability of the orphans. Already special courts have been created in 1988, there was a court for prevention of corruption act. And 1989 there was a special act for the scheduled caste in tribes. Whenever these people they are posed with a particular accusation, the, according to 193 CRBC, that should be the cognizance of the offense and forwarding by a magisterial authority which was not there and after several like, amendments they have made that now. And recently there is a small issue whether the cognizance ability of a human rights advocate or a human rights uh, judiciary, whether it is speculative, implicit or explicit, it is there in demand, it is there in debate and before one or two months there was a very short discussion between few people because each and everybody, when they are reporting about human rights violation, they have to report against the public servants. Because most of the people, those who are victimizers for these victims, they are probably persons in good pose. They are most probably public servants. Then 197 CRPC, it deals with some special uh, cases and classes, how to deal with these people and go forward. Whether this type of cognizance is there explicit or it is speculated, that was discussed before one week that was being discussed by few people in the human rights protection cell. Like that human rights, especially in the Human Rights Protection Act, they have mentioned it is to deal with uh, all the offences relating to violation of human rights. And what is the jurisdiction of that? What is the ambit of that? How far it is distinguishable from the other rights? Because human rights is an exhaustive subject. Eh? It is a very great a comprehensive subject. And how we have to distinguish the borders of various these things and how we can create the jurisdiction as well as the effective machinery of human rights to take uh, impudent or bold steps against the working machinery like government servants or investigation agencies or even judiciaries in case of judicial accountability and other things, how to forward against these things. So human rights, it is just a show and it should be further nourished with more power, more reachability, more rapidity and more rewarding to the society to bring the real effect for which it has been implanted in the society. So, so how many people they are taking misuse of human rights also? Everybody, anybody is considered to be human and what is about social amputation? There was a legal question between social surgery and human rights. In incorrigible cases, Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, he has shown innumerable ways how to deal diplomatically and tactically with incorrigible elements which if they are allowed, they will spoil the whole social advanism. So, how to justify that? And human rights should be taught only to the conscience of people, how to teach the conscience of the people, all the power making people or policy making people, they should be sent for a special training. Special training for getting empathy, what is philanthropy, what is social concern, what is moral courage, they should be taught like that. And uh, it is a long term procedure, we have started a small spark and somebody asked what is the use of conducting these seminars, everybody is doing that, then we told that it should be a perennial fire, everywhere it should be done, everybody they should do that and every second it should be contemplated. It is a perennial shower of vigilance and action needed for the society. And somebody asked, you were talking about society and we are only few people here. Already I explained in my seminars that society does not refer to thousands of flock of sheep. 
it refers to only those limited people, rare members of the society. Society means any individual who thinks for the society, aims for the social welfare, loves the society and works for the welfare. Each and everybody is as equal as the whole social mass or even more valuable than that. I believe that we the society are present here without minding the qualitative enrichment qualitatively with a wholehearted involvement we have assembled here. We have created a small scintillation that it become a radiant and effective fire Totally, it should extirpate the nations in the society and create light of human rights awareness to love the fellow beings. If anybody is not, who is a human being? Number one, who is human is not a human being. The person who has similar response or likely response or charitable response towards his fellow beings as an extensive product is a human being. Let us be human, let us be more human, and being human itself is equal to divine. Let us take the charge into the mind. Let us take a strong decision and following the footprints of these people, let there be a university, let there be strong courses, and also there are courses, but more training, more teaching, more practice. It should be fed from the breast of the mother. It should be given by the food that we take and it should be given by the teachers and imparting of divine knowledge. It should be brought by worship and rituals, what we do in our religious ambience. It should be human rights, awareness, imparting and collective well-being should be the droplet that should be secreted from each and every act of human being. Let us take this noble deed in our mind and proceed towards the pathway of success, which is nothing but all-round happiness, peace and harmony. Narayan, Narayan, Narayan.